，时间又够 ，quorum 又够啦。Time is up. We have also formed a quorum, so why don't we、um, have a commencement? First item on the agenda: confirmation of the minutes.、Um, it's about the meeting held on 15th of April. We have already sent out a copy of the draft minutes to you. We haven't received any amendments. Please confirm the minutes if you don't propose any amendments. Thank you. As to the information papers issued since the last meeting, we haven't received any information paper. Third item on the agenda: date of next meeting and items for discussion. For the July regular meeting, it will be the last regular meeting for the year, and we held on the 15th of July at 2:30 p.m. As to the Our proposed items: we have the trade relations between the mainland and Hong Kong, as was the implementation of the mainland and Hong Kong closer economic partnership arrangement. And then, fourth item,、uh, discussion item: research and development of Chinese medicines. I'd like to invite the administration's representatives to join us. First of all, I would like to welcome Ms. Janet Wong, Commissioner for Innovation and Technology. Second,、um, from the Innovation and Technology Commission, we have Dr. Cecilia Pang, who is the Biotechnology Director. And I would also like to welcome Mr. Kison Lee, Secretary General, Testing and Certification. Of the Hong Kong Council for Testing and Certification, as well as Mr. Terence Mann, Senior Pharmacist of the Department of Health,、uh, Ms. Wong, I think、uh, you would like to show us a short video, right?、Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know that all along members are very concerned and interested in、uh, the research and development of Chinese medicine. Would、like、I to report to you? Um, about the committee on research and development of Chinese medicines, chaired by me under the ITC, and with representatives from the government, industry, academic, and research sectors, the Innovation and Technology Fund has、uh, funded a number of projects in terms of testing and certification. We've also done a lot of work. And of course, the paper gives you the details. I don't want to go into the details. In fact, the most important part of the paper is about the very last、uh, part of the、uh, paper, and that's in relation to the GMP support. The CE has said that. In the long run, in order to enhance the standards of our uh, Chinese uh, proprietary medicine, we should be moving in the direction of GMP. But then there are many、uh, SMEs in Hong Kong in terms of technology, in terms of、uh, financial positions. Maybe they are not able to do so at this stage, and therefore the committee spent a lot of time on for forwarding help to them. So. Uh, today we would like to report to you on two points. First of all, we have to find out what is meant by GMP, and then we can tell whether one is moving in that direction. So we have invited the、um, HKIB of the CU Hong Kong to provide training to us, and、um, at different stages we have got different.、Um, Uh, types of training. First of all, we have a two-day seminar, so as to enable SMEs to understand the basic concepts of about GMP. If interested, they can move on to the second stage. It means that they can go to inspect facilities meeting the requirements of CM. 
uh, GMP, and thirdly, there will be tailor-made assistance. In other words, uh, there will be such visits to the SMEs who are uh, interested to see how they can meet the GMP requirements. The project is still ongoing. It is quite good. Over a hundred enterprises have already sent their representatives to take part in the training program. And then in terms of contract manufacturing and technical support, in other words, there's more about the facilities. You understand that for GMP, the requirements are very strict and a lot of equipment will be needed. And so some C uh, SMEs may find it difficult to find the money to invest so heavily in such facilities. Again, together with the Hong Kong IB, there is the Hong Kong Institute of Biotechnology of RCU Hong Kong. We have this arrangement. Currently, they have already got the manufacturing facilities, but then they have almost uh, reached the design capacity. So we are thinking that perhaps if in the future many uh, enterprises would like to um, as, uh, get the assistance, they would not have any spare capacity to entertain the request. So we have this proposal to expand the capacity. First of all, there will be a new facility so that uh, there will be manufacturing and technical support. And we're talking about expansion, but of course there will be new facilities as well. In terms of training, uh, there will be a new platform so that the um, students, the undergraduates, as well as the uh, uh, peers in the industry uh, can make use of it. Um, it is costing $33 million. We're very glad to see that the um, Hong Kong uh, Jockey Club Charities Trust uh, is coming to our assistance. Um, they have always been very interested in CM. And when this idea was mentioned, uh, the response was good. And later on, there was a formal request to the Hong Kong JCCT as well as the ITF. Uh, for the Hong Kong JCCT, um, 10.8 million dollars uh, will be made available for partitioning and painting work. Uh, such um, uh, elements cannot be subsidized by us. And then for the rest, um, um, the ITF will pick up the uh, bill. Now, the JCCT has written to us telling us that they have already um, uh, agreed uh, to give approval to that funding uh, request. So today, if we get your support, then we can also move on. Now, as far as the government subsidy is concerned, it is um, $23 million. It is less than $30 million. In other words, we don't need to go to the um, Finance Committee. Um, I think uh, some of you may not have the experience of visiting a GMP. Therefore, we are showing you a uh, short video clip uh, lasting for a few minutes so that you have an idea of how a GMP facility will look like. All right, thank you, Ms. Wong. Let's have a look at the five-minute uh, clip. In recent years, most countries are requesting the pharmaceutical manufacturers to meet the GMP. There are international GMP standards, say, for example, the WHO GMP as well as the PICS GMP. Um, PICS GMP. They have been adopted by many countries, and there is mutual recognition of the GMP reports. To effectively uh, implement the GMPs, there are five crucial factors. GMP provides that for the operational staff, they must meet the related <coughs> requirements concerning knowledge and the actual uh, operational skills. For the manufacturing plant, they have to follow the relevant uh, requirements. There must be a reasonable design concerning the flow of human uh, resources as well as other uh, resources so as to prevent cross-contamination.
um, materials uh, management from raw materials, interim products, as well as finished products, prevention of contamination, confusion, as well as human errors. Uh, there must be assurance to make sure that quality is of good standards and um, substandard materials being used to manufacture products for uh, sale. And then the pharmaceutical manufacturers must follow the transmission ordinance. Um, undesirable medical advertisements, as well as the um, coke concerning the uh, manufacturing quality. You have to take care of the entire flow and the personal hygiene of the workers involved. For GMP enterprises, from the choice of raw materials, the manufacturing process, etc., all are subject to very vigorous uh, requirements. First of all, there must be recognized um, uh, suppliers, and there are specifications for the materials. At the time of purchase, the suppliers must provide the product analysis. GMP also says that there should be an independent uh, barcoding system so that the semi-products and the finished products can be identified, traced, and um, tracked. Completed semi-products will be inspected by QC staff in relation to the change of water content. And then the, there will be a sealed uh, container to extract by 20 or 30 times of the relevant materials in relation to the water content. The extract uh, under high temperature and high pressure will be evaporated and then it will be dehydrated and then the water content will be checked. The um, compliant uh, mixtures will be put into the process for further manufacturing and then QC will carry out random checks at different stages. Uh, those uh, drugs that are meeting the requirements can be removed from the clean uh, manufacturing zone. And then the semi-products, the uh, instruction sheets, etc., will be put into the containers with expiry dates, etc. QC will then carry out random checks. When they are found to be compliant, then they can be um, taken out of the factory. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I open the floor to members for questions. First of all, Dr. N. Jen, the Deputy Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A question for the Commissioner. I want to know, in Hong Kong, I want to know how many facilities are meeting the requirements of GMP, and among which I want to know How many types of CMs are being manufactured? Generally speaking, in Hong Kong, we've only got 11 GMP recognized GM, C, uh, GMP facilities. And then the types of drugs, 200 and, ni and 90. Dr. Chen, yes, may I add? Um, as a reply to Dr. Chang, right now, there are 290 proprietary Chinese medicine manufacturers, and 11 have got GMP certificates issued by the Department of Health. But if uh, medical products are manufactured overseas or in the mainland and are imported into Hong Kong, upon registration in Hong Kong, we also require them to have been manufactured by GMP certificated factories. In other words, if they were manufactured in the mainland, they have to be uh, manufactured by a GMP compliant factory on the mainland before they can register in Hong Kong. Okay. We have this center operated by the administration. How many factories are using the facilities of your center? There are only 11. 
manufacturers who are GMP compliant, but there are 290 in Hong Kong. In other words, those who are not GMP compliant can make use of your center to manufacture CM. So how many factories are using your center? According to information from Hong Kong IB, over all these years, it has provided uh, information services or agent uh, manufacturing. There are 50 odd in that list. In other words, there are 50 which are doing manufacturing here. Well, Hong Kong IB provides five different services. It could be an agent for manufacturing, or it can formulate manufacturing processes for other people. It can also provide consultation service, like design of the factory building and other technical advice. It can also do QC analyses for other people. At the same time, if R&D units need to do clinical tests, and uh, if they need to do small-scale manufacturing so they can get samples for testing, uh, that can be done as well. i just like to know about production. How many factories have used this center to manufacture capsule proprietary medicine? And how many types of medicine have been manufactured? Maybe one factory will entrust three products with you. Perhaps I answer you this way. The production lines of Hong Kong IB can only manufacture uh, powdered medicine as well as capsules. Later on, they can have two more production lines to include tablets and soft uh, solids. How many factories are using the center? Let me look for the figure. There are about 40 factories which have products manufactured by the IB. And how many kinds of medicines are we talking about? I don't have that figure. Can you give it to me after the meeting? Certainly. I'll stay in the queue. Next, Mr. Felix Chung. Thank you, Chairman. In para 8 of the paper, it talks about testing and certification of CM. I understand that the administration would like to promote um, recognition for our testing and certification of CM surface. I'd like to know what results have you achieved over the years. CM covers a very broad area. In terms of testing and certification, do you focus on any area? And are these certificates recognized overseas and on the mainland? I will kick off and then I'll defer to Mr. Lee for a supplement. Mr. Lee is the Secretary General of the Hong Kong Council for Testing and Certification. We are doing a few things now, and that is inter-laboratory professional comparison. If you want to do it, you need to know where you stand. You cannot just work on your own. We have done once inter-laboratory comparison, and we did a comparison of chemical testing. So the council knows how it compares with others. In the first round, 12 testing labs took part. Since the reaction was quite good, we did a second round. 15 labs took part. As for the types of medicines, uh, that could be added by Mr. Lee in a moment. If they work for the uh, sector, they must get the recognition of Hong Kong AS first. I'm very glad to report that the service was launched for CM only in March 2011. By March 2014, 12 have been accredited for testing heavy metals 
pesticide residu residues and microbial contents of CM. The last area that will be tested will be product testing. The Productivity Council will be developing that program. I can ask Mr. Lee to supplement, please. Mr. Lee, please. Thank you, Chairman. The Commissioner mentioned that we did uh, some interlap comparison. In the first round, we covered 10 Chinese medicines. In the second round, which is going on, we will do the testing on 12 CMM. After the testing is over, we also plan to do with this within this year the CMM recognition scheme by the Hong Kong PC. So management will be done better, and uh, people will have more confidence in CM. As to recognition by overseas or mainland authorities through the signing of different agreements, 85 accreditation agencies from 65 economic entities recognize the certificates issued by Hong Kong. You say uh, you have tested 10 CM and you are covering 12 in, the f in this round. Can you give us some examples? There is some repetition. In the first round, we did it with Ginseng, um, Dangui, and uh, other medicines. In the second round, the 12 CMM would include Huang Qi, Chuan Gong, uh, Mao Dan Pi, etc. Uh, these are the uh, for interlap comparison. I'd like to know about Ginseng and Bear Go Bleda. Uh, if you have tested them, what are their functions? Yesterday, the um, Customs and Excise Department found that there were scales from pangolin. I'd like to know uh, whether you also test for the functions of such. Well, actually, it is not gallbladder of bears, but another type of Chinese medicine. Right now, we do not test for efficacy. We only test uh, safety, authenticity, and the nature or composition, whether it contains water or dust. We do not include efficacy in the test. I will stand in the queue. Next, Mr. Wang Ting Kong. Thank you. Since we have got a timetable for GMP for CM. Many friends said to me that they were worried about increased cost. Uh, you looked at the five criteria for GMP. It is not easy for them to shoulder the cost. And a few friends actually closed down their shop because it was, it was too costly. My question for the Bureau is whether you would provide an incentive and allow this to be done on a voluntary basis. It will be better for you to mandate it after the present timetable is exhausted. Plus, I told them that actually there is a way out. For example, uh, the Hong Kong IB can be an agent to do manufacturing on your behalf. But they say that is the only one in Hong Kong. Will the administration provide more GMP factories or plants? to help SMEs, including micro manufacturers, to help them do the manufacturing. 
In fact, many prescriptions in the community are quite effective, but the investment is huge and the market is limited. But uh, this is some very valuable heritage. Can you provide another way out instead of having people operate their own factories because those five GMP criteria are quite difficult to comply with? Mr. Wang, you are correct. The criteria are quite strict, I understand. On GMP and whether it become it will become mandatory. Now at this stage it is voluntary. Later on, Mr Mann, the pharmacist, can add, but now we do not have a timetable to make this mandatory. We are doing a lot of preparation work. The HKIB is the only one in Hong Kong because it is supported by a university. Its board of directors is made up of high-ranking people in the CU Hong Kong. That is why it has the confidence of the sector. Now, if it is commercial and if you allow them to get secret prescriptions for the manufacture of CM, people may worry. Actually, um, a science, science professor of CU is the head of Hong Kong IB, and uh, he, his integrity is very much recognized by the sector. In the paper, uh, we have mentioned that all the large um, trade associations support HKIB. This time around, we are expanding its scope by a large scale. Now, the manufacturing area is 2,880 square feet, but it will be included to 8,500 square feet. In other words, um, an increase of over 200 percent and also two more types of medicines can be manufactured. This is only for the present stage, but as you know, the scope is expanded by quite a big margin. I believe this will be all right until the midterm, but we will be watching the demand and usage closely. If it is proved that demand outstrips supply, we will try to think of ways to deal with the situation. But since uh, we are expanding Hong Kong IB by a wide margin, I don't think there will be a problem in the short term. Can I ask the senior pharmacist to add? Mr. Mann? Thank you, Chairman. As Ms. Wong said, GMP right now is not a mandatory requirement. In Hong Kong, proprietary CM manufacturers uh, can get a license and they can already operate. So GMP is not a mandatory requirement. But in order that uh, PCM can be made more safe and the quality can be maintained, the 2011 PA mentioned that there will be a timetable for the gradual promotion of uh, PCM manufacturing. In 2011, the relevant committee proposed to adopt an international standard, um, and that might well become a licensing condition for PCM manufacturers. And uh, we say there will be four years grace period. And right now, we are conducting a consultation, and we have received different views uh, from the sector. They say there will be a financial problem and they will have difficulty operating their own plant. They also need technical support. Uh, they also have training needs. So at present, we are still consulting the trade. We understand uh, the difficulties that they face. Uh, their SMEs, so it's difficult for them to um, establish a pharmaceutical uh, manufacturer. So sometimes it is in the form of an OEM, so they will try to entrust the manufacturing process with a GMP uh, facility. Just now, the Commissioner and Mr. Mann have both said that GMP currently is voluntary, but then there's only a transitional arrangement. In other words, there is a deadline. Once the deadline is reached, then there's no more um, grace period. So I want to know whether it will be 
like this or not. Of course, we've mentioned uh, a an alternative that is uh, you will just um, have a voluntary forever instead of being uh, mandatory. For the Hong Kong IB, I think recently there is an expansion. With the expansion, it means that they can expand the manufacturing capacity and they can take up more OEM work. But have you ever considered providing for a second Hong Kong IB? Uh, there's this question of um, competition when there is only one uh, in Hong Kong, so uh, it is a monopoly. And if it is not uh, um, interested in taking up your order, then that's it. And then you cannot bargain about the price. So. I want to know if uh, you can consider setting up a second Hong Kong IB. Of course, without government support, without the backing up by a university, it will be very difficult to realize this objective. So government uh, support will be the key to the um, arrangement. So maybe you can consider this so that the micro and small enterprises in the pharmaceutical industry can have an alternative route. Commissioner, we don't rule out if we can have a good um, organizer. It must have the respect of the industry and it must have sufficient uh, administrative uh, capacity. So it isn't just a matter of someone uh, being interested. So if there is a demand for it, and if uh, there is an organization which is capable of doing so, we're willing to consider the idea. Now, I think we have all talked about the uh, goal of making it mandatory, but we haven't yet set a deadline. About 100 enterprises have already taken part in the training. So um, it means that we know how many enterprises are still active. Maybe Dr. Pang can supplement to my uh, answer. We have got 290 on the register, but a lot of them haven't turned up despite the various approaches adopted. So for those that are very active, that would be about the number. So uh, there will be more analysis in the longer term to find out about the number of active uh, enterprises. Dr. Pang, be brief. For the Hong Kong IB, there is the GMP training session. So we they took this opportunity to carry out a reality check to find out how many manufacturers are active and how many of them would be interested in enhancing the standards and to become a GMP um, manufacturer. 87, there is about one third of the 290 manufacturers um, uh, put down their names to take part in the program and then 70 were interested in um, having a look. And then further on, for those interested in getting an interview to answer the specific questions, to provide specific assistance, there were only 37 interested in joining. So from such figures, we can see that they matched with the number of consultees in the DFH consultation exercise. So we have got this number of active enterprises interested uh, in uh, enhancing the standards. So it's below 100 vis-a-vis -vis 290 manufacturer license holders. I think some of them are not um, having full-fledged uh, manufacturing. Some of them are having the manufacturing uh, done on you know, the mainland or overseas, and they have taken our manufacturer's license to carry out the packaging work in Hong Kong. And uh, I think uh, we have that number of interested uh, manufacturers. So through this exercise, we can find out more about the status quo. Next, Mr. Xin Chung Kai. It seems that uh, we have got um, just 5% of them.
But then, if you take away those that are only interested in doing the packaging work, work being done by one to two staff members, I think at first you had a, a figure of 87. They attended the workshop, so somewhat and somehow they were interested in the initial phase. Have you ever considered the greatest difficulty faced by them? Do you think that the GMP doesn't help them, or, or do you know why? As far as uh, the information we have in hand has shown, uh, those interested uh, manufacturers are very active in the manufacturing, and they are interested in raising their standards. According to their feedback, it is said that for GMP manufacturing, there are a number of big issues. First of all, the technology. They are worried that the original um, art of technology would require further research before they can improve the, the process. And then others are worried that they may not have the technical support to be accredited. And then uh, of course, some are also worried about the expensive facilities, while others are concerned about the policy support. Say, GMP for Western medicine may not be the same as the GMP for Chinese medicine. So many of them aren't quite sure about the GMP requirements. In other words, Hong Kong isn't ready. Can I put it that way? So we are still quite far away from reaching the goal. Well, it is an evolution. Um, we started with Western medicine. My understanding is that when you when we talk about GMP, it has been uh, with us for uh, ten years, eight years. Well, we have had it for Western medicine for many years, but uh, we have just started it for Chinese medicine. For the eleven, uh, are they all CMs? Or CMs, CM. What What about Western medicine? How many of them are already GMP uh, compliant? Twenty five. Some of them also are involved in Chinese medicine, so it isn't that bad. We have only got that number of uh, Western medicine GMP manufacturers uh, out of how many? So what is the ratio? Currently, it is mandatory for Western medicine, so it is 100%, 100%. All right, next, Mr. Martin Liao. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, for the R&D of Chinese medicine, I may be sort of uh, talking about something which is uh, um, known to you. For R&D, you need a lot of resources. And so it means that you are interested in the rate of return. Now, for Western medicine, uh, there is intellectual property protection. You have got the patent protection for a period of time. So within the patent period, in other words, the, you get a return on the money you spent on R&D. For Chinese medicine, if you have invented something entirely new, then of course you get the IP protection. We have mentioned this before. There is, we just wonder if there is a way to protect the traditional Chinese medicine or if it is a matter of something evolving from the traditional Chinese medicine, we may not be able to get coverage of IP rights. So, Commissioner, have you ever considered the following? That is, finding ways to protect the or conserve the traditional Chinese medicine or a medicine evolving from TCM? Dr. Pang. I recall that uh, Mr. Liu asked the same question at the last meeting that we came. So um, <coughs> we did ask the IPD 
colleagues to advise us and attended our meetings as to how we could afford protection. Our understanding is that there are different ways to protect the IPROs. Uh, I, sorry, can you slow down a bit? I can't hear you. Uh, there can be patent protection or they can claim that it is a trade secret for IPT colleagues. They have mentioned that many traditional formulas or um, um, some of them would rather regard it as a trade secret and they would rather not take out a patent, not apply for a patent. Can I follow up? Of course, trademark isn't a way to help. You can create a trademark under anybody's name and you can get a trademark for selling one ton uh, noodles. Um, this is the first point. Secondly, you say that you said that we could rely on trade secrets, but then like um, the trade secrets covering the formula for Coca Cola or the uh, cough medicines, but then when you sell the PCM, you may have a trade secret, but you can't really keep it secret because others can always understand the process by resorting to reverse engineering. So trade secret isn't a secret at all. Uh, in other words, the protection would be inadequate. But then you have to spend a lot of money on the R&D, and yet once it is um, offered in the market, um, it will be made public and then it means that you are losing all your uh, investment. So I have always said that perhaps we need to resort to something innovative to afford legal protection to uh, CM. I'm not surprised by the answers given, but I don't think this is taking care of the interests of the industry. So please reconsider your position. Uh, thank you. Uh, last time. Uh, after Mr. Liao has raised the point, since uh, we can only play a facilitating role as we are not in the IP field, um, I think uh, we got down to something very uh, complicated. I, but then that committee or that's, that forum is a very good forum. If the industry uh, think that the current arrangements are inadequate, we'll be very happy to con conduct further uh, studies with them. Uh, I think the other day, it uh, you can't count on the industry to come up with some ideas to protect their interests. Let me suggest something. Maybe we should legislate to protect biodiversity. Maybe you can think along this direction. So please consider Mr. Leung's proposal. Commissioner, I've also got a few questions. First of all, you have said that for the GMP, currently it is voluntary, it is not mandatory. You haven't got a timetable. And then there is the pigs after the GMP. The two of them are very close. Somebody has to work very hard to get GMP. And then if you say that you want to have pigs again, then why don't we just have one step and go directly to pigs? For the sector, they would have to invest in GMP and then do pigs. Um, that's the first question. Number two, you say there are 290-odd plants. Uh, registered. I think there were 400 odd two years ago, and you have already phased out a big number. Now we only have 200 odd, and you are saying that the Hong Kong IB may be doing the screening, and there would just be 80 to 100. In other words, from 290, it will dwindle to 100, as Mr. Wang Ting Kwong was saying the micro enterprises will all be phased out. And in fact, some 
products have been found to have high efficacy, even if they were manufactured by micro enterprises. My question for you is, is it that you hire the plant to them or do they charge you a fee? How much more costs are we talking about? Or is it that I entrust the Hong Kong IB to do something and it charges me a processing fee? If there are ancient recipes or prescriptions, they may not want to give it to you. Can I hire a facility, for example, a certain area of a certain size, and then I pay you the rent, then I can operate there? I don't really understand the way of working at Hong Kong IB. Yes, Chairman. The Hong Kong IB does not hire out its physical space. It doesn't subdivide its space and rent it out. We have had a detailed discussion with HKIB. Apart from Hong Kong IB, nobody else wants to do it because once there is contamination, the problem will be huge. If you hire out a certain area to anybody, and uh, when he leaves and vacates the area, you know, there is steaming involved in the preparation of Chinese medicine. And if there is contamination, then the resulting pro problem will be very huge. Now we talk about contract manufacturing, meaning the SME can give the prescription to Hong Kong IB to do the manufacturing on its behalf. We discussed before whether we could trust the Hong Kong IB because you actually hand over the prescription. I, but I don't think that is a big issue. Since it is an organization operated by the staff of CU Hong Kong, the sector has great trust in it. We have consulted many people in the sector and they say, if you can't trust CEO Hong Kong, then who can you trust? It is operated by a professor. And the board of directors have been appointed by the CEO Hong Kong. As for PICS, I can defer to Mr. Mann to explain. Chairman, you said that the number will dwindle from 290 to 100. In fact, we do not do the screening. We just want to provide the best service and support. If they are sincere, we can help them. We can even tailor make uh, something for them. We can actually tell them, you are here, but you are a distance off from GMP, and this is what you can do. Now we do not have a deadline. We hope that those who have the interest with such good support from us can migrate to GMP themselves. If we want to go global, GMP is an indispensable guarantee. Maybe I can ask Mr. Mann to say something um, uh, about PICS. Thank you, Chairman. In Hong Kong, we al already have GMP for CM. In 2011, the Chinese Medicine Committee said that the GMP should become a licensing standard, but it remains a proposal. No final decision has been made, but this will be considered by the committee later um, in view of the prevailing conditions and demand from the sector. They will then make a decision on the way forward. Next, second round, and Chang. Thank you, Chairman. In Hong Kong, we have uh, an important expo every year. Is it annual or biannual? It's called ICMCM, an international expo come conference on CM and CM development. I've received some recommendations from the business sector. They say the law is too strict on them. 
and the scale of the Expo Come Conference has become smaller. Well, but I don't know because I haven't taken part in that conference. They say in 2011 from South Korea, some representatives came, but they brought with them many new products for exhibition. However, those have not been registered in Hong Kong because they haven't got this market in Hong Kong and it was said that they could not even exhibit their products. Therefore, they gave up coming to Hong Kong. They would not participate in ICMCM. This uh, international fair or expo has been with us for over 10 years and now it has become quite influential. However, it's unfortunate that it is shrinking in size year on year. In the mainland, there are a, main, a few main provinces um, making Chinese medicine and also because of this reason they did not come. Last year, Sichuan province had a very unpleasant experience in 2011. They felt that it was unreasonable. They said why the missions have to be registered first in Hong Kong. This is just an exhibition fair. Why do you ask people to have the missions ex uh, register first? Because they don't even know whether they can sell the medicine in Hong Kong and registration is expensive. I remember the secretary said that uh, he would like Hong Kong to become a platform for intellectual protection. Now, by IP, of course, we talk about registration, um, like new and high-tech products. Can you look into this? I have heard this in the last two years. I hope there could be some improvements. Commissioner, can you answer this question? Commissioner. Actually, the ITD has no part in this because this has more to do with the Department of Health. Right now, the, the law is worded this way and uh, this is about uh, law implementation. Can I defer to the Department of Health? Mr. Mann, Chairman, we're aware of this issue and we are communicating with the sector. According to the law, if uh, there is import or sale of PCM, uh, I, Dr. Chang will know they have to be registered first. But uh, there is a way to do it. If exhibitors would like to import medicines for exhibition only, we will allow it. But upon exhibition, um, the medicines cannot be sold in Hong Kong. If it is sale, no matter where you are talking about, um, it will not be allowed if it has not been registered locally. Some exhibitors actually wanted to give the sample medicine to manufacturers or businesses for sale. What if the medicines have been registered in their own country? Well, it's the same. Even if they have been registered in other countries, uh, still, if you want to have sale or transactions done in Hong Kong, they have to be registered in Hong Kong first. The same goes for every other place. Hong Kong is no different from any other place. However, if the medicines are just for exhibition, there is a company in Hong Kong which can apply for the import and then export of the medicines. This is allowed. But they said they might want to send the medicines by post. So you have no part in that. Is that right? No. According to the import and export ordinance, any PCM that is imported or exported from Hong Kong, they need a, a, an import license or export license. However, in fact, many people go to South Korea and people also buy online. And then the medicines are sent by post. This is already happening. I would suggest that, uh, well, I understand that is what the law says. That's why, uh, since I did not attend the international fair, I don't know the situation on the ground. Maybe you 
no more than I do. I just like to say, if indeed this is happening, then I would ask you to consider how you can relax the requirements. So, small volume of PCM brought by exhibitors. Say, for example, if uh, it doesn't exceed a certain level, then you should allow them to be sold. Well, the exhibitors will still have to take up the responsibility. If what they sell is harmful to human beings, then uh, as manufacturers, they have the responsibility. And we can, in fact, say clearly to customers that such medicines have not been registered in Hong Kong. If uh, they sell 20 cartons, I can chop on every carton to say this medicine has not been registered in Hong Kong. If uh, it is for human consumption and if there is any undesirable consequence, then the D of H will not be held responsible. I think this can be done because you would put a chop on it to delineate responsibility. Say we go on a trip and then we buy lots and lots of such things back to Hong Kong. That is outside your control as well. In order to promote this industry, what can we do? I don't want you just to say, uh, this is what the law says, sorry, no. So you are suffocating the trade. On the one hand, you have this committee to uh, research and develop Chinese medicine, and then you also have the expo, but then you are strangling it. I think, therefore, you should try to relax the law, and perhaps you can draw up bylaws or regulations as you like. so as to relax the requirements. I think this is so sad because uh, the expo is shrinking in size. I would ask the commissioner to take this up with the Department of Health so as to make the uh, business more buoyant. Commissioner, I can add to that. The same can be said about nutrition labeling. I'm very experienced in that. When Dr. Yok Chow was here, there were also these expos uh, to showcase new food items, and these food items have to be imported into Hong Kong. If you don't allow that, then there will be no chance for new food products to be introduced into Hong Kong. After talking to Dr. Yok Chow, he accepted the small volume exemption. In other words, if the volume does not exceed a certain uh, level, you can import it into Hong Kong. I think that can be uh, also done for these PCM expos. If Hong Kong consumers have no way to try the medicines concerned, there will be no opportunity for Hong Kong people to use that medicine. If you ask for a license, uh, if you ask for testing and accreditation, uh, then before import, people would already have to spend a lot of money. But if you allow a, a small volume to be introduced in Hong Kong, and if the efficacy is established by local use, then uh, they would have to apply for a license for large volume import. Okay, I will relate this to the Department of Health. Until now, uh, we still have the small volume exemption for food items. Mr. Chairman, if I may take up one more minute, it isn't just a matter of making it unattractive to overseas uh, participants. Even for SMEs in Hong Kong, they have told me that they have uh, come up with a new product. They would like to have a trial sale, but then if they're expected to take a registration, it will cost hundreds of um, uh, thousands of dollars, and they are not sure of the success or otherwise. So is it possible to have something similar to the small volume exemption scheme? So it isn't just a matter about the attractiveness to the overseas participants, but also local SMEs. Commissioner, please consider the idea. Next, Mr. Chong. If I may follow up on the question about testing.
I think you will test the transmission for toxins, metals, etc. I want to know whether you will test a CM for a dozen or so ingredients before you will say that the transmission involved is up to standard. And then I've just read this booklet on Chinese medicine. Then we are told about the traditional method of authenticating the transmission. Usually you would uh, feel it, you will look at the colors, etc. So I wonder if uh, you would also make reference to the traditional methods of authenticating the transmission, Mr. Lee. Well, as far as the PCM is concerned, uh, we want to be sure about the safety and we want to look at the quality of the transmission. So, as to whether we want to test each and every PCM before we will accept it, well, we're interested in the um, pesticide residues, etc. But it doesn't mean that it should be applied across the board. Um, Mr. Chung referred to the texture as well as the color. Well, there are a number of ways to go about it. We look at the colors, the DNA, etc. There are a number of innovative ways to uh, authenticate the transmission. As to which method is to be adopted, it depends on the kind of medicine involved as well as the cost. Take ginseng as an example. You will try to test and then use and you say that um, this lot of ginseng is safe, but does it mean that you have to test each and every consignment before you allow the ginseng to be used in the manufacturing process? Mr. Lee, for raw materials like ginseng, there isn't a statutory requirement to say that it should be backed by a certificate of testing. In the future, um, we will set up a scheme which is voluntary, it means that a number of tests have to be uh, taken. And we hope that um, the importers will be interested in using it. Well, for the testing and certification of CM, I want to know when it will be launched. And I want to know how many medicines will be tested. to be followed by the manufacturers. Mr. Lee, for the testing and certification scheme, it can be launched within this year. This is mainly to enable traders and retailers of Chinese medicines to have the products tested and get certified. So it isn't for manufacturers to, to use, but then for raw materials to be obtained, and by the manufacturers, if the raw materials are backed up by the certificates, then I'm sure they will have more confidence. Mr. Sin, I think we need to be mindful about the time. Probably this isn't the right forum to ask this question, but I still try. Now, it is for the of each to regulate Chinese medicine, though you are more interested in the R&D of Chinese medicine. You don't want to have something done, and yet um, the D of H says that it is not safe. It will be too embarrassing. Now, for transmedicine, of course, they have got a very uh, comprehensive framework for the regulation. But in transmedicine, I think it is something totally different. You may very well say that it is more relaxed. Sometimes we have um, found that the mercury content is in exceedance. And what about the efficacy? It seems that there is no control over the um, PCM. 
as far as the efficacy claims are concerned. But of course, should there be exceedings in relation to certain ingredients, it is subject to control. Thank you, Mr. Sin, for your question. I think it's a matter of the registration of PCM. The applicant must provide information to establish the safety, efficacy, and quality. Now, for a drug to be registered, relevant information should be given to us. If it is claimed that it is having efficacy for a particular problem, then it has to be proved. For a new medicine, we have to be uh, presented with the clinical data. So for PCM, this is how we register the PCM. Is there a committee to fetch the information? Yes, we do fetch the information. Well, we have got traditional prescriptions, and then we have got standards. Um, in fact, they follow the um, Chinese material medical standards, so they have to follow the standards if they make such a claim, and then we will give recognition to the registration. Commissioner, I think you have heard our view. I think Mr. Wang Ting Kuang and I have mentioned about the uh, hardship uh, on the uh, micro and small enterprises. Please do not uh, drive them uh, away from the market. Other than that, we are in support of the R&D of Chinese medicine. Um, next, I would like to skip um, item 5 and go directly to item 6 first, since we have got a number of members here. And this in relation to the duty visit to Israel. Uh, we have got four members present who have already put down their names uh, to go to Israel. We would like to go between the 3rd and the um, 8th of August. Altogether, nine members have put down their names to join the tour. And we've also got one member who is not a panel member. Sorry, in fact, we've got 10 names, and one being a member who is a non-panel member. Miss Emily Lau has asked whether we want to invite the administration to be represented on the um, duty visit tour as well. And it is said that we should get somebody who has experience uh, in dealing with Israel. Uh, I'll just take up a few minutes, uh, Commissioner. We've already written to the administration. We've been told that Mr. Zhang, the assistant um, commissioner, as well as Mr. Chen Hui, uh, the senior manager, can uh, join the tour. And the expenses will be the responsibility of the administration. Uh, so, members, how do you find the idea? Are you in support? Yes, all right. When are we going to hold a meeting to discuss the matter? Later on, we must hold a meeting. I'm sorry, I'm otherwise engaged at that time, so I can't join you on the trip. For Deputy Chair, I'm afraid he's also... Um, not able to make it, so perhaps you should elect among yourselves to have a delegation leader. Now, let's come back to the fifth item, and that's about the progress report on research and development centers 2013 to 14. I think it is a um, familiar topic, but I think we've got a number of new faces. Yes, we have got a new CEO for the Nano and Advanced Materials Institute Limited. So, Commissioner, welcome once again. And we have Mr. Frank Chang, Assistant Commissioner for Innovation Technology Funding Schemes. So this gentleman will be joining our Israeli, uh, Israel trip. And then from the Hong Kong Automotive Parts and Accessory Systems R&D Center, we have the General Manager, Dr. Lawrence Cheung. And from the Hong Kong Research Institute of Textiles and Apparel, uh, Apparel we have the CEO, Mr. Edwin K 
Kerr, and then Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute. We have the CEO, Dr. Zheng Nim Quan, and from the Hong Kong R&D Center for Logistics and Supply Chain Management and Neighboring Technologies with the CEO, Mr. Simon Wong, and Mr. Daniel Yu, CEO of the Nano and Advanced Materials Institute uh, Limited. Some of you are known to us, while others uh, may be coming here for the first time, so welcome ladies and gentlemen for attending our meeting today. On behalf of the panel, I would like to welcome you all to today's meeting. Commissioner, once again, I'll give you the floor. I think you would like to give us a presentation. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe first of all, we'd like to show you the following. Every year we come to your meetings uh, in June. Since last June, we have had some progress. For this year, we are providing a shorter uh, video. Uh, last year, Mr. Sin reminded us to make it shorter. We have got a longer version on the YouTube. Uh, now we're going to spend 10 minutes uh, covering everything. Thank you. Hello. In the past year, S3 have had a lot of uh, progress in the partnership with the industries. We are continuing to support the SMEs so that they can enhance their competitiveness uh, by relying on technology. We have also had partnership agreements with a number of large enterprises. Uh, this is the information age. Every minute we see a large amount of information being um, created and a lot of data being uh, produced, useful for many people. The traditional methods are not up to the mark, so we have to rely on new technology to get the useful data. Last year, we signed a, an agreement with HP so that we set up a center and in, in relation to big data analysis and cloud technology, we try to cooperate with each other to carry out R&D. HP has always been um, developing the uh, technologies. Um, we are confident in S3. We hope that by having a partnership, we can have something good for Hong Kong. The R&D Center has already started the first collaboration project so as to support the HP's uh, platform for big data, and we're trying to seek uh, solutions. We have also signed an agreement with TCL in relation to sustainable wireless technology and application of products. So we have become long-term strategic partners. We are glad to have this long-term uh, cooperation partnership uh, with um, the TCL. Uh, we hope that um, we can have better um, sort of integration and then the customers can have a better uh, intelligent home environment. In order to allow the elderly uh, people to have a comfortable and safe uh, living environment, together with the Polytechnic U in uh, Yamate, we set up a uh, mock home so that uh, we can demonstrate over 20 innovative uh, healthcare and medical technologies. We believe that with the uh, devices, the elderly can have a safe home environment. We'll continue to support the ITC so that we make use of information technology so that we can contribute to providing a safe home to the elderly people. Um, for the Hong Kong Research Institute of Textiles and Apparel, we have got over 41 uh, mature uh, projects. I would like to go over a number of them for you. The Hong Kong Theater, together with Hong Kong Sports Institute, have uh, tried to develop high efficiency and comfortable um, textiles for athletes. Uh, they are durable and they can be uh, ultraviolet resistant. And then we make use of 3D data in order to get the data of um, athletes. And then we make use of uh, these models which can sweat so as to test out the athletic uh, wear. Uh, we think uh, it is very good because 
It is like a second skin, and even if I have been sweating, it helps to release the sweat. And also, it is a violet light protective. Also, the Hong Kong Rita has also got this imaging color measurement system in order to have um, strict color management for the textiles industry. We can make every color into data and we can test and measure the different colors so that color information can transmit it uh, very accurately. Well, this is very important with the ICM uh, system. We can digitize colors so we can be very accurate and objective in color assessment and there will be a um, cutting of loss resulting from human errors. I am very happy to see this solution. The NAMI is actively working with the um, industries and we will do research into advanced materials. I will now introduce to you two important projects of NAMI. Advanced uh, insulation thermal um, coating. Uh, we use reflective light in order to reduce the heat and it can then cover most radiation heat and it can reduce temperature by 16 degrees. We cooperate with the third phase of Hong Kong um, Science Park and then we have tried out the outdoor facility at St. Paul's Hospital. We can see that the heat can be uh, reduced by 25% and therefore electricity usage has been reduced by 25% as well. Many Hong Kong and uh, mainland companies have already done the testing. Plasma lighting is a forward-looking advanced lighting technology. It can provide high illumination, low cost, and well-spread uh, illumination. It is the closest to natural illumination. It can be used in large areas which requires high illumination. NEMI helps to resolve technical problems including advanced um, heat dissipation coating so that in the end we can control the spread and distribution of rays. We provide um, heat conducting or electricity conducting and also um, anti-corrosion surfaces. Hi, I'm Wang Guangyang and now I would introduce to you some projects of LCSM in the past year. LCM and the airline freight uh, system has together drawn up this system to let the uh, airport know the location of lorries. We use FI, FRID reader um, and we place it on the windscreen of the trucks or lorries. So the container terminals in the airport will have about half an hour to assign parking space to lorries and also um, arrange for manpower for loading and unloading. We expect the lorries to stay only in a heckle for one hour instead of two hours. This um, system will allow heckle to understand when the lorries will come and we can improve logistics by being able to assign parking spaces uh, half an hour before. Uh, since Wi-Fi does not cover everywhere and container trucks sometimes cannot receive messages. LCSM have um, com cooperated with local universities so that we can have Wi-Fi uh, terminals installed on high-speed moving articles. Now that we have the Wi-Fi mesh uh, wireless network, we can make use of wireless terminals uh, so they can receive the messages anywhere they are working. In order to reduce accidents at uh, construction sites, LCSM has cooperated with the uh, Polytechnic University in order to explore PCMS. This will help management of uh, construction sites and this has been tested in many 
government sites with PCMS workers and vehicle operators will be issued immediate warnings for them to stop immediately so we can save people. The APAS started many projects relating to new energy cars. I will now introduce three of these to you. This bus has four special characteristics. It is light, it is um, sustainable, uh, it is smart, and it is designed with the local language. It is using aluminium alloy, which is just a uh, mix in quality to that used by airplanes. It is uh, energy efficient, and it can continue on a long um, journey. It will be tested in 2015, and it can be in the market in the third quarter of 2015. This will comply with the government's policies to use electric uh, vehicles to improve air quality in Hong Kong. In the past year, the electric car recharging station has been uh, advanced from 20 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt, and the charging time has been reduced from 45 minutes to 20 minutes. We have also started the combo standard um, high speed station for charging. Apart from supporting more electric vehicles from Europe and US manufacturers, we can also provide point to point. A charging facility so we do not have to build so many stations. Pure electric cars uh, can have their batteries worn out easily. This is because when they accelerate or brake, the uh, batteries are under high pressure. APERS make use of lithium battery in order to start making a hybrid um, electricity storage system. This may not be able to take over the traditional batteries, but then it can make use of a large scale uh, charging so that the lithium batteries can uh, live longer. Thank you very, very much, Commissioner. Yes, Chairman, uh, let me also say in brief that in the past year, the five centers have performed quite well, particularly with regard to commercialization. Uh, they have done quite a bit. Members will understand that one of the important indicators is that in the second five-year period, uh, we have agreed that the industry contribution should reach 20% for all centers. And as of now, they have all achieved that target. This year, two centers seem to have industry contribution reduced. Now, I'd like to explain the situation. First of all, Astri. This has uh, reduced for Astri because uh, technically we have done some realignment. Astri was set up in the year 2000, but other centers were set up in 2006, though, so they have different accounting methods. In the end, after a long time of negotiation, we have uh, tallied the system for all centers. But after reconfiguration, we cannot do direct uh, comparison with last year. The same goes for NAMI uh, for different factors. First of all, it has got really huge programs which near the end um, experienced uh, different uh, market conditions, especially with regard to PV. Competition is fierce in the market, so the market is not performing well. And also, this has to do with the time of um, items being fed into the accounts. Some of them happened uh, on the 31st of March or behind or after. So the um, therefore the reduction in industry contribution this year. Lastly, I think that is also a reasonable um, reason. Dr. Ng Ka Ming, uh, a UST professor, had been the CEO of NAMI for seven years since the start of NAMI. Last year, he left to resume professorship at UST. That is why um, the new CEO needs to have a run-in time to settle in his 
host. I believe NAMI will perform better next year. We're also very happy to say that the collaborative uh, projects where the uh, government puts in 50 percent and the companies put in 50 percent. We think uh, that is one indicator for commercialization. In this regard, the increase is over 80 percent. In terms of a public sector using the uh, projects, again, there has been a big jump. You have seen some in the video clip. Indeed, uh, this report is a routine report annually. But next year, come 2015, that report is going to be an important one because until now, the Finance Committee has provided funding, but that will expire by the 31st of March 2017. Now, of course, we can think about the financial arrangements um, near the end of that period, but we won't do that. By June next year, we are going to come back with a very detailed review report on the second four and a half like year period. So next year, that report is going to be important. But this year, we have this report, and we have the CEOs of all five centers here. We are happy to take questions. Thank you, Commissioner. The floor is open for questions. First, Mr. Felix Chong. I have seen this clip, and it seems all R&D centers have achieved results, and I expect commercialization to continue gradually. Can I cite an example? And I'm talking about the Hong Kong Rita. Just now, uh, I think there were two encouraging uh, examples. The high-performance athletic outfit. How can we promote it to sports products companies so they find this um, palatable? As you know, there are a few large such shops, uh, you know, um, many sponsors for the World Cup are providing such high performance athletic outfit. Uh, can we do that in Hong Kong? And also color management. Uh, this is so important for manufacturers. Is the technology so mature that uh, manufacturers can actually use it? Mr. Kwok, thank you for the question. Uh, together with the uh, rowing team for Hong Kong. Since they do not have a lot of sponsors, they are in quite a, a difficult situation. In recent years, the, the athletes were wearing um, old um, outfits. Uh, we had the motive of helping the rowing team. But after that, we started to talk to the brands uh, to tell them our R&D results. And then the brands had a confidence in us. A, f a few months ago, we signed MOUs uh, with four international brand manufacturers to do R&D. Uh, maybe you know Patagonia, and uh, it is cooperating in R&D with us. This is because they have seen such R&D results and they have shown interest. We think in the next few years, when we have more such examples, we'll be able to attract more companies and brands to cooperate with us. So we can have a breakthrough into the international market. As for the ICM machine, in fact, tonight I will fly to Shanghai to mount an exhibition because tomorrow uh, there will be the color management companies uh, which have shown interest in the machine and uh, they are showing so much interest. This is totally different from their existing technology and their existing business model. So they would like to reach an agreement with us ASAP. Just now you were shown the second generation. We are working on the third generation uh, with some improvement to the software required. 
they have already uh, tried some prototypes, and there is one very large-scale fabric uh, manufacturer who is interested. Even though the prototype isn't perfect, but they're still interested in getting it. So we are fully confident in this product, Mr. Chairman. In the month of April, in Geneva, I understand that um, three gold medals and one silver medal uh, were uh, given um, to the Hong Kong Rita at that uh, International Exhibition of Inventions of Geneva. In other words, uh, we are of very high standards with the awards. I want to know. how you're going to deal with the products which have been given such acclamation. Well, uh, by the ICM, it was the winning entry at last year's uh, exhibition in Geneva. Um, it was a high-profile event uh, since it was a uh, winner, and so manufacturers were interested to approach us. They would like to know more about us. Last year we had two gold medals. This year we are very lucky to have won three gold medals. It is um, seldom to see that for a centre as small as ours, um, <coughs> we are able to get that many uh, awards. And as a result of the awards, many uh, international enterprises are interested in us. Mr. Wong. Four minutes each. Sorry, because of the lack of time. Yes, I will try my best to ask my question. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Other than the new faces, we see some new uh, new faces as well. Well, for the products of R and D. I think the most important point is about commercialization. Otherwise, it is um, not going to be meaningful. For the past year, for the many R and D centers, from the concepts to the products, I want to know on average how much time has it has been taken. And then in the past year, I want to know about the products that have been launched to the market in the market. How many of them have been sold to local enterprises? How many sold to overseas enterprises? And I want to know whether you have had cooperation with the mainland uh, R&D centers so that you can uh, commercialize the R&D products. In addition, I have a suggestion for you, and I hope that the commissioner and the commission will Link up the CEOs of the R and D centers and the various chambers of commerce, so that the chambers of commerce know them better, and then we can um, sort of um, make apply their R and D products. Uh, in this way, it will be more effective. Yes, I give recognition to their R and D uh, outcomes, but then they have to be uh, applied in the industries so that they can turn out products. I think that's the second stage, Commissioner. Um, please uh, consider my proposal. Try to do more liaison work so that the business sector will benefit. So will the R and D centers. Commissioner, certainly, I think all the CEOs are very close to the relevant or corresponding chambers of commerce. But then there are also other interdisciplinary um, uh, chambers of commerce. In the second half of the year, there will be many new products, and then uh, there will be exhibitions and other liaison events. I will certainly alert you to the activities, and you will be invited to, to go. Now, as to the number of cooperation projects with overseas countries and with the mainland market, maybe I can defer to my um, deputy. Mr. Chairman, we have been asked by Mr. Wong as to the time taken to develop a concept to commercialization 
of the products. He would like to know whether we have got any benchmarks. Well, for R and D, well,、um, it takes time. You can't do it overnight, and it requires a lot of preparation.、Uh, for S three, take S three as an example. Last year. For the licensing of their products, and for the revenue they obtained,、um, they achieved a tar-、uh, they achieved eight million dollars, and also ten million dollars came from the industries. That is, the industries asked S three for direct contract research. That is, they have recognized the ability of S three. They Believe that S3 can help them, and so they have given funding to S3 directly、um, in return for the service. So you can see that they do、uh, yield results. And then for the licensing of the products, it means that S3 has already obtained certain patents, and then the manufacturers find the patents useful, and so the patents have been acquired to. Uh, apply the technology in their activities, so there's a indirect way to show their effectiveness. And、uh, I hope that you will support our work.、Uh, we can't yield yield results in the short term, but、um, uh, let's hope that the five R and D centers, as well as our universities, will continue to realize their R and D efforts. As to whether we have had. Listen with the overseas、uh, R and D centers. If I may cite an example for Rita. Last year, we have had an agreement with a famous Japanese、uh, university for the purpose of research and development. In other words, through such arrangements, we are able to ride on the advantage of overseas、uh, research capabilities, and then、uh, we can sort of、um, make it more effective. And then in the in in the video, you saw that、uh, S3 had just signed an agreement with HP, and they've put in a lot of resources、uh, in the Hong Kong、um, entity so as to、uh, have the big data、um, analysis. So you can see that、uh, even overseas R and D centers are also very interested in our capability, and they also give recognition to our achievements. Thank you. Next,、uh, An Zhang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have、uh, already got agreements with HP and TCL. Who took the initiative? You or the the other partner? For TCL, TCL approached us because they would like to have the IPR protection. For their products to go over the to go over the world, they carried out a study and then they find that our patents would be of help to us. So they approached us. HP is a bilateral effort, and we have had discussion with them for quite a period of time. They have、uh, an R and D center in California. They have also got one in Singapore, and they have finally decided to set up one in Hong Kong as well. It is good to approach、uh, many large enterprises. When I was watching this video a moment ago, I thought, if only Janet can get the few large-scale pharmaceutical manufacturers from the mainland to Hong Kong, and then there will be a lot of hope for the pharmaceutical industry of Hong Kong. Do they want to come? Of course they do. They do want to come. They don't need a lot of、uh, space. They know that Hong Kong lacks space. So for the、um, land-intensive、uh, parts, they can. 
keep them on the mainland. If only they can come, and then they will provide a very good effort, a、uh, good input to us, so that we can become a huge trading hub, and then、um, we'll have sufficient money to support the R and D. Um, Miss Wong, I hope that、um, next time, next year, at the same time, you will come back to us, and I'm sure you are very capable. And I think we are all from Shandong Province. We had our origin in Shandong, and even the Shandong ladies are very capable. If I may ask this question, recently, as a result of the development of the North East NT,、um, we are all kept very busy in Nechkol. Now, please pay attention to this point. For the development bureau, they would like to develop NT North East. It is said that 170,000 people will move there to live, but then easily it would become something like somewhere like Tianshui Wai,、uh, in the middle of nowhere. But I hope that Janet, you can try to help Paul Chen. I don't think he can find the solution, but please try to help him. Try to do the advance work for him. Now we're going to have a huge population there. It's important to get jobs for them, so please try to help him in this regard. Let me also cover one other point, and then for Nami, I understand. That、um, in Hong Kong we have got、um, many leakage、um, problems in the buildings of Hong Kong. We haven't got the relevant products to deal with the problem, so we need to have the、uh, special paint to deal with water leakage. Well, Miss Chen, you talk about the new development areas. You don't need to worry. For the planning department, whenever we have got a new development area, and in fact, this is、uh, what what has happened in the case of the River Loop, we have been given earmarked、uh, land for this、uh, purpose. Maybe Mr. Jiang can answer this problem. Well, I think、uh, we can try to develop it in Hong Kong. Well, Mr. Wai Chixing, the PS, and other、um, government departments involved, like the、uh, FDHD, we asked them to come together. S3 also came in. We were interested in two areas. First of all, the collapse of trees. Um, I used to be with the development bureau, and、uh, so we were concerned about the problem of、um, tree safety as well as、uh, water seepage or water leakage.、Um, so trees were able to deal with the problem. Mr. Wong、um, from the Uh, logistics and supply chain、uh, management enabling technologies. I think they have already come up with something for the housing de、uh, department to monitor the trees that are vulnerable to collapsing. For water leakage, I'm afraid it、um, it is very a demand it is very demanding job. Mr. Charles Mock, Mr. Chairman, I don't have a lot to say, but I just want to make use of this opportunity to give the CEOs to talk about the following. I think we are all concerned about commercialization. Bin, what is the biggest difficulty for you vis-à-vis -vis commercialization? Do you think、uh, there is anything about policies? That you can help you do something. Can each of the five CEOs speak up? 
there are new CEOs at the two ends. Okay, why don't they speak up first? Dr. Zhang, thank you for the question. For APAS, commercialization is very important to us. In the past year, we had some collaborative projects with 50-50 input. There is a higher chance for such projects to be commercialized. The sponsors themselves have to at least pay 50% of the project fee. Therefore, they would have considered the possible outcome before they would join uh, that the result should be commercialized. In the past uh, year, we had seven collaborative projects at APAS. We think the situation is quite satisfactory. In the process of commercialization, we don't think we should just work on collaborative projects because uh, there will not be a technology roadmap in such projects. So in the time to come, we would like to do more seed projects and platform projects to consolidate our technological know-how and also our liaison with the sectors. I think the biggest problem is to grasp the scope of projects which will be useful to the sector and which will be pursued by the sector. To us, it is quite fortunate that with regard to new energy cars, meaning electric cars, they are catching on throughout the world, including in Hong Kong and the mainland. So when the sector talked to us, they showed a lot of interest in such new projects. Uh, with um, intelligent systems, for example, the market may not be ready for them. The market and the technology have to synchronize that is the most important part. Sometimes you have the technology, but not the market. Sometimes you have the market, but the technology is not ready. Well, uh, because of time constraint, can just Mr. Yu speak up? I was at Astri as a director for six years, and I have been a NAMI director for four years. And now the bureau secretary has asked me to be this CEO. My first view is research institutes. Should we start with research or application? To me, if we want our technology to be applied, then the sector should start with application. We are asked whether we can help trade associations and Hong Kong companies. In these six months, we'll just focus on Hong Kong companies. With regard to advanced materials and NAMI or nanotechnology, the difficulty is how advanced materials can be researched and developed. Uh, we have got 16 collaborative projects already in just six months, and tomorrow we'll have a board meeting hoping to get endorsement of 20 projects, 16 of which are collaborative. Now, as to um, how much time will be used for commercialization? That will be about 12 to 18 months. We have five sectors concentrating on Hong Kong companies. We need to research into advanced materials. And we try to align that with our technology roadmap. We believe within the year we should be able to collaborate with about 20 to 30 Hong Kong companies for the rolling out of products. Next, Emily Lau. Thank you, Chairman. I welcome the CEOs, particularly. Uh, Commissioner, you know, we indulge you. I think uh, you are the civil servant we indulge in most. You uh, talked about Mr. Frank Zhang, who will accompany us to Israel. I hope uh, you will 
be inputting uh, information during the trip. The CEOs are here. I don't know whether you are happy to tell us why we need a new bureau. You have been working, and I was happy viewing the video clip. Uh, I hope the commissioner will tell us more what you can do. But uh, without the new bureau, what is there that you cannot do? We support you a lot. Uh, chairman, I think uh, very few electrical panels are so harmonious that we throw our weight behind the administration unanimously. You come here, we support you in everything, but now you ask for another bureau. Does it mean that you will be able to scale new heights? Uh, is it for the commissioner? No, I think it's for the CEOs. They may not want to answer you. No, I'm not asking you to criticize the new bureau, but if you want to speak up, please do, Mr. Wong. Members, maybe I tell you my own views. We work in logistics. In fact, we cover many new uh, different sectors, whether it be promotion or commercialization. There are two levels. One, technological level. We promote to electronics factories and also uh, system consolidators. In other words, people who work on technology. But then the application is for trade, for logistics, for construction. As you can see, uh, as many members asked, there could be a higher level of requirement. Are you collaborating with overseas companies? Can you go into the mainland market? Do you have um, the state-of-the-art technology? Well, we achieve that in certain areas. We make use of the ITF, and we have already explored into new technologies together with six universities. But it is not that we can do everything. I was in Israel not too long ago, and I can see that uh, many of the Israelite technologies are suitable for use in Hong Kong and even for collaborating with the mainland. I can see many opportunities, and uh, we cannot just work within our own areas. Say, my own R&D center, most of the time uh, is devoted to the Hong Kong market and the Hong Kong sector. But we would like to be able to also make use of overseas technology. Many SMEs are saying whether we can make uh, the market bigger. How can the Bureau help you? Well, I cannot dare not say anything on behalf of the Bureau, but if we have a higher level management, it will be better. Say we are an R&D center. When we go out, we may see people of a certain level. But if you have the Bureau, you can cooperate with the country, a city, and you can cover bigger areas. And I would like to add that even in Hong Kong, the use of technology could be cross-department and also cross-sector. I would hope that there could be a higher level body like the Bureau to do the promotion. I can give you an example, uh, e-commerce. It will affect Hong Kong's logistics, retail, and trade later. And the uh, center, R&D center, SCM, may not be able to handle this. Um, and this kind of uh, topic will uh, cover many different areas, and I believe a higher level Bureau can be useful for us. I think Mr. Wong does not understand the administration very well. Very often when you have uh, interdepartmental, interbureau initiatives, it's very difficult unless you have the CS4A to do the coordination for you. But the CS4A is now um, herself burdened with too many things. Maybe this is not the time to go into this anyway. Commissioner, uh, this is the best panel, isn't it? Um, I think uh, you are happy to come to this panel. May not It may not be the same for other panels. OK, talking about commercialization, I can see that the five centers have done a lot. And I'm sure next year, when you come with the report, I'm sure you have a, an even better report card for us. I don't think. We should do the um, evaluation every year with R&D centers. 
like the audit commission, I don't think uh, it should do the assessment every year. We should give you a longer working period, like five years, ten years, etc. I'm sure everybody here wants you to do more. I myself am not going to Israel, but I would wish you a very successful trip. Mr. Frank Tsang, when you accompany my members, please bring back more R&D initiatives. Maybe in Hong Kong, we are going to have a new picture next year. In fact, the IF or ITD just took a big group to Israel. So Mr. Tang will be able to furnish members with uh, a lot of background information before you leave. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner, thank you, and uh, thank you to the CEOs and the rest of the team. AOB, we have already covered the Israel trip. Anything under AOB? Nothing under AOB? Thank you very much for attending the meeting. Meeting adjourned.